Good morning everybody. We made it. We made it through the election. The world is still turning. Life goes on. Well, what a bit of an, uh, bit of an event overnight, eh? I hope you all sailed through it pretty safely. Hope you made some good money. Not uh, had any horror stories, I hope. Um, thank you, Angela, um, for your thoughts there that uh, the team prepared you well and it, uh, it was easy to trade. Um, we're, we're not out the woods yet, okay? There's still some very big risks uh, around regarding trading. So um, we'll get stuck into those. Obviously, we've got a few other bits and pieces, but I'm not going to dwell on them too much because obviously there's plenty of other stuff going on that we need to be concerned about. So we'll just get through uh, some of the main things first, uh, some of the old things first. Bit of data yesterday out of uh, the US. We had the ISM numbers um, and pretty good. Blew the doors off, in fact. Um, we saw a strong number coming in for the headline, 56 up from a 53.8 um, expected, uh, well above the 54.9 previously. Employment making a significant jump into expansion at 53 from 48 expect expected. Um, new orders, though, were a little softer, um, but overall pretty good all round. Uh, prices paid um, coming in a little bit softer, but still running at a strong number. So um, no, seemingly no hurricane impact in the services number. Um, so it's all good for the US economy moving forward, at least in the short term. Um, we did have uh, Bank of Canada minutes as well. Um, there was a strong consensus for a big cut. Uh, they see upside CPI risk easing uh, and that members wanted to convey that a larger step was appropriate given the economic data seen since July. Uh, so it's been kind of confirming why they stepped up to that big cut. Um, after all that data and after the election stuff uh, for the Fed, we're pricing uh, 100 basis points of cuts uh, by September next year. So that's down slightly um, from what the market was expecting and part of the fallout from what's going on, uh, obviously, in the election. Um, coming over to New Zealand, we had a bit of data out from there. And uh, overall, it was a bit uh, soft on the employment change, down 0.5%. Um, though the unemployment rate didn't go up as much as expected, was expected to jump to 5%, came in at 4.8%. Uh, Labour costs coming down a bit there as well, both on the quarter and on the year versus the last quarter. Uh, participation rate dropped there, so uh, a bit of worries there for the Kiwi, um, hence why they've been still sitting on a bit of a dovish line at the RBNZ, uh, and that data will keep them there very much so. Um, coming over to the data this morning, it's been services, uh, PMI finals and uh, some of the others. Uh, Japan um, went backwards, went into contraction, uh, not as bad as expected, but still it's a negative number there. Um, Spain, they went backwards a little bit. They've been outperforming pretty much everyone in the Eurozone, um, in the main countries anyway. Uh, they went backwards 54.9 on their services. Italy, they went the other way. They surprised to the upside, 52.4. They went much worse in their manufacturing numbers earlier this week. Um, but they've improved 52.4 in the services. Uh, France, their final number was a decent improvement as well, 48, uh, sorry, 49.2 from 48.3. Quite a high um, revision, um, but still puts them lower than last month and remains in contraction. Germany, also with a slight improvement over their flash number uh, and uh, maybe some further green shoots coming from them. The pan euro number also improving in the final read there. Uh, PPI in the Eurozone as expected. Uh, well, depending on where you're looking at, some had it uh, expected at minus 0 0.6. So pretty much uh, bang on the numbers there. Right, that's all that done and dusted. Uh, not much else going on in the headlines. So... The election, where do we stand? Well, Trump has sealed it pretty much. Um, this is just uh, what I've just been watching on Google. Um, he needs another three seats 
to uh, confirm the win, but uh, it looks like it's going that way. Either way, he's also potentially cleaning up across the houses. The Senate, he's got 51, so he's got the 50 for the majority uh, over there. In the House, it's looking closer, a bit closer over there. Still got some way to go uh, for that majority. Uh, so that's one we need to keep an eye on. Uh, but overall, it looks like Mr. Trump is going to be uh, sitting down. Oh, well, there we go. Boom. It's changed already. So we're done. 277. He's got over the 270 now, officially. So it's all done and dusted. Okay, we've got Donald Trump for four more years, uh, which is going to be fun and games for those of us sitting uh, outside of the US. We can have plenty of dancing, plenty of tweeting, and uh, plenty of good knows what. But it's going to mean plenty of volatility to look forward to. Right, so what's been happening in the market? So... First and foremost, we've had the initial reaction, uh, as you can see there, when it was looking like Trump was going to be winning and when he started uh, picking up uh, wins, we've seen a reaction of dollar strength. OK, so this is the first reaction that we're having to deal with. OK, the confirmation or the during the result move. OK, the next important stage is going to be when the US opens. So give or take uh, an hour for now because it's one thing the rest of the world reacting in markets. It's going to be another thing for the US to react when their markets open. So don't get lulled into a false sense of security here that we've seen all the moves. We're all finished. It's all done. The market's traded it. And now we're moving on to uh, trading other things. Uh, we haven't. OK, the US reaction is going to be very important. Now, what we have got, and I'm going to use euro dollar as an example and i'll go through some of the other pairs and assets as well because there's similar pictures in most of them what we have done is now set some limits okay euro dollar got down pretty much to the 107 level um you know my 107 level it's been a big fat red line for ages and ages so i said yesterday you need to look at your bigger wider levels go into your four hours your dailies your weeklies and look for the bigger, stronger levels if you wish to trade. OK, this move is a confirmation. OK, we've got something we can play with now. Not interested in the techs over the results because the election doesn't care for coloured lines on the chart. Now we know the result. Now we can put a bit more faith into the tech levels. Um, but you still need to stick to your stronger ones. So do your scoring. OK, we've got this uh, 107.60. It was a low back on the 23rd of October. Uh, it's an old level. And what are we doing now? We're just swinging around it. So it was important then. It's not important now. So do your strength test on your levels. Okay, what's been significant with this is that we've seen resistance into 108 after we got this initial move down. So we've got a marker on the top side now. Pretty simple, 108, 107s. Okay, if we can't get back above 108, 108.10, then that's going to keep the downside pressure on. OK, but if we don't get through 107, then it's going to potentially mark a uh, decent bottom if we get another retest down there. So now you can go back to relying on your charts, picking your levels. I'm more inclined now to get into a trade if I see another test down here and it holds. Maybe perhaps a short if we get a test up here and it holds. Um, but again, we need to see what the US wants to do with all this. Um, so that was one of the big pairs to look at. Obviously, Dollar Mex is another one. Uh, and I'm going to swing it out to a daily chart because I think it's more important to look at that view. Um, we couldn't quite get up to uh, the 50 up at this level here that we held back in, uh, when was it, uh, July 2022. Um, couldn't quite get up to there. But we got about above this high. Back in September 2022, okay, and now we're just turning around it. We're not trying to get above it. We've been back below it, so you know you can use this as a bit of a pivot level. Something like dollar mex is one of the pairs, or mex is one of the currencies you've got to watch carefully now because you know something like euro dollar may have just a bit of short term impact over the election. Something like the Mexican peso is probably going to have a longer e effect, you know 
We know what Trump's going to do. He said he's going to slap tariffs on uh, anything that comes out of Mexico, particularly autos. Um, he's going to renegotiate the USMCA. So, you know, currencies like this have got perhaps more in it to go if his policies start coming out that's negative for currencies like uh, the Mexican peso. So this one, I think, is going to be a strong dip buying uh, mover from now on. So you need to look at your support levels. For me, it's down in this 2020s, 2022s against these old highs here. We had a bit of a break point. Maybe you can take it down to this 1990 area uh, where we were turning around. And then uh, just on Friday, we've had a hold down there. So you've got an area you can lean against. Okay, so if you weren't doing anything in the mix now, if you think this is all bad news for the Mexican peso, then you either wait for this level to confirm or you wait for a retest of any of these levels. Um, if you want to get short, the big level is going to be up here, 2103 against the 50. Okay, so now you can start trusting your levels a bit more. I don't know what it's going to do from here. Likelihood is that it's going to keep going higher. Uh, but again, let's see what the reaction is. And I'll just bring it into a shorter time frame because you can see we're flipping around this level. So there's no decision made. doesn't matter if you like this level or not. If you start getting the hold above it, then that potentially is going to give it the springboard. If we start holding below it, you could say maybe it's over. This move is over at least for the short term. And then you can trade short off of it. So you don't need a bias for this one. You can just trade it off right now, one particular level, or have a bit of patience and wait for the range edges. Uh, Dollar China, another one that's going to be affected by Mr. Trump. Again, I'll stick it on a daily for you. Um, we got up to the top of this traffic zone here, up towards the high 719s. We've got the 200 DMA up there as well. Um, so that's where it's held. I'm. This is one of the ones, if, it, if, if this keeps going, I'm going to maybe look for shorts if we get up towards this sort of area, the 728s again, up towards these highs. I'd rather wait till I get to a nice big level before I start uh, thinking about a trade. Because I think for this one, this is going to be something that uh, maybe China says, okay, enough's enough if it gets up here. But in the meantime, you've got levels to look at down here. So again, China is another one that we need to see what the policies are going to be from Trump. Um, while I'm waffling on, um, if you've got any questions about this, if you've got any pairs or assets you want me to look at, then uh, please put it into the chat there. Give me something to talk about, but uh, I'll go through uh, as much as I can. Um, we'll look at stocks in a moment, but I'm going to have a look at gold because that's obviously another one that's pretty important and a lot of people trade it. And uh, again, look where we stopped. Pretty much bang on the big figure. So again, this has given us a bit of a marker. Okay, it's shown that Throughout the election reaction, this level is an important level. This is where traders drew the line and said, that's low enough. Thank you very much. The dip buyers came in. Um, as I've been saying this week, this is an asset that potentially is one of the best ones that will continue with its fundamental moves, i.e. why it's been going up after the election. OK, this is looks more like just an election reaction. OK, there's been a reason why. Gold's been climbing for months, okay, and it's not the election. So if there's an asset that's going to return back to its own fundamentals after the noise has died down, this is potentially one of them, okay? So I'm going to be watching this one as well. If we get another reaction, say the US comes in, starts buying dollars, gold gets sold off again, if we don't get through that 2700 I'm potentially going to look at that to add back to my longs, Um Maybe we even get a move down to the bigger level, 26.85. Um, I've currently got my stops right on the rest of my longs at 26.80. So I might just knock them under that 26.70 level just in case there's a bit more noise to come. But uh, yeah, that's my marker for gold, 2700. We get there again and we hold it, then I'm going to think about a long because it's a low risk trade. I can get in at 2700, maybe have a stop 10 bucks below. If it breaks, Fine, I'm wrong, and then uh, see what it does. Or I go a smaller trade, and I lean against some of these other levels here. So I split a trade between the other levels to add back in. Um, there's many ways to skin the cat, as you well know. But for now, we know where the low is. That's what you've got to be watching. That's why it's been on my chart. And, you know, maybe this 27, 12, 13 area. 
maybe that becomes secondary support. That would look like a step up by buyers off of this level if we start holding above there. So plenty of levels uh, to look at. You can now go back to your charts. You know what we need to break. Uh, Mike, yep, yeah, I look. Let's have a look at Aussie and Kiwi. I mean, a lot of these are, you know, following obviously the dollar. So a lot of these moves are, are looking pretty similar. Um, the difference with this, though, and you know, it depends how you want to read it. We were looking fairly constructive. Well, I won't, well, I won't go into a daily just yet. Let's come back down. We were looking a bit constructive. You know, we were looking like we were heading up. We had this short-term double bottom down here, but it's been blasted out over the uh, election stuff. Okay, so from a longer-term perspective, you know, for the last couple of months, that break of this low here, it keeps that trend in play, okay, irrespective of the, the bounce up off of it, which looks fairly strong at the moment, but we're now struggling to get through 66 again okay so again what's going to be important a retest another retest down here against those lows and if it holds and look we've just got a little tentative sign that uh, we've had a rehold after this noise here so you get another move down here and that holds then that's going to give you a bit of conviction if you're looking at longs uh, on the other side you've got either the 66 the 66 20 that we were hitting on yesterday or now this area, 66, 45, 50, okay? So you know where you're going to be wrong if you're trying shorts on any continued rally. Uh, but now, at the moment, we're just holding below that 66. So all we did all the hard work over the last week or so. Now we've got to do all the hard work again, okay? So depending on what, what you're looking at, Mike, are you uh, long or you're short? What are you uh, you can doing about that? Uh, Kiwi. Very similar pattern with this one. Now, we know Kiwi's been looking a bit weaker um, than Aussie dollar uh, because it was struggling. You know, Aussie dollar had a little further move up. Kiwi's been struggling. So the, the path of least resistance at the moment seems to be down. So if you want to be long in this one again, we had that low there. Look for a potential retest. Uh, if not, probably your 59 59.10 is a line in the sand. If we break back below there, even by a couple of pips, even if we make a new low today, 59.05 or something, okay, that will show that this momentum is going to continue. Um, needs to get back above here. Yesterday's high needs to get back above 66, uh, 60, 30. Then it needs to get back above 60, 50. So again, if you want to short it, wait for your levels, okay? Go with one of them or split a trade across the whole area um but you need we need or i want to see and i know a lot of our chat room guys as well want to see what's going to happen when the us comes in that's going to either confirm some of these moves or it's going to keep them going okay uh Derez, what do i think the fed's reaction to the election i the fed's reaction the market's seemingly getting a little less dovish it's 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 pairing back um, rate cut expectations in terms of total amount of, of cuts. Uh, for me, I don't think it changes an awful lot uh, for the Fed. When they went the 50, they did that irrespective of the election. Um, you know, even though people at the time called it, and you know, they were pandering to one side or the other. They went their 50, they're doing monetary policy for what the economy is doing right now, okay? The economy is doing fine. That services number was great yesterday um we know that nfp potentially wasn't a bigger disaster as many expected yes we got a low number but if you add in the the storm numbers if you add in the strike numbers you know maybe it was short by 120 130 150,000 okay so if we hadn't had that add on the 12 we might have got 150 160k jobs and that would have been fine tickety boo the rest of it was all fine, unemployment. So the UK, uh, the US economy is ticking along as it has been, okay? Two and a half, three percent growth, whatever whatever it's going to be running at. So what do the Fed need to do? The Fed don't need to do anything, but they still want to get rates down. Um, they don't want to have rates still up near 5%. So is it going to change their mind? Likely Powell's going to get bombarded with questions 
Uh, and remember that the, the FOMC is tomorrow, not today uh, as it usually is uh, on a Wednesday. So it's coming tomorrow. He's going to get bombarded with lots of questions. He's going to kick them all into a ditch, OK, because it's not their remit to comment on the election. Yes, they may comment on what it generally may mean for borrowing and fiscal spending and how they may have to react to that. But they're not going to get into the intricacies of politics. So for me, um, they should cut tomorrow by 25. I don't think the election will stop them doing that. Um, it will be more of a shock if they do. Um, but Powell's told us he expects two more cuts or a total of 50 basis point cuts across the two meetings, November and December. So he's not he's uh, pretty much warned off against uh, any one of those being a 50. So we're going to get 25 tomorrow and we should get 25 in December and it's business as usual for the Fed. OK, it's only going to be the data that's going to change the Fed's mind. If inflation starts ramping up in the next month, couple of months, if the data starts heating up, like we've just seen in, in services at the ISM, then that's something to give the Fed a pause, not Trump getting in power. Because A, he's not getting the hot seat until January. Uh, and B, we don't know what his policy is going to do. We don't know how the market and how the data is going to react to any policies moving forward. So that's all for the future, all for next year. For now, the economy is still ticking over and they are changing monetary policy because of what's going on now um, rather than what may happen in six months' time. So I don't expect any change from the Fed. It will be a shock if they do something like go on hold unless they explain it away by the data. So for the dollar, um, you need to just, again, at some point we're going to switch back to the fundamentals. At the moment, we're going through all this election stuff. Um, it's going to last today, probably for the rest of the week, and then maybe for next week things start settling down a bit. Uh, but you know what markets are like, goldfish markets. Uh, we could all be done and dusted by uh, close of business today. Um Yields is something you need to keep an eye on. Uh, I was, again, talking about this. This is an important asset to keep an eye on, US bonds. We've obviously had a bit of a, a rally up in yields again. Twos getting into 420s, up, uh, ticking above 430s. Uh, so we're on our way up. And again, match this off against the Fed. You know, let's have a look. We've got the Fed tomorrow. Let me uh, ping it up. Uh, tomorrow, here we go. Oh, where are we down here? So the Fed, okay, expected rates to come down 25 pips, expected to come down 25 pips uh, in December as well. Okay, so we're getting very close, or we will be getting very close to the interest rate being close to where two-year yields are trading. Uh, and as I've been saying, if two-year yields go above, where the Fed is, then that's going to be a bit of a disparity. Um, so I'm, I'm still got the itch here to get in and maybe start buying some bonds, but uh, I'm going to try and bide my time uh, on this one and pick the levels. Um, and the reason I'm looking at twos is because obviously it's more of a short-term play than looking at tens. Because obviously, who knows where things are going to be in ten years' time or you know, down the road. This is more risk of maybe moving higher than uh, we'll see in two years. But we're getting up to it, the 450% mark. Um, I think that's going to be a big old level. Forget the moving averages. Um, I don't do tech on yields. These lines are just, as you can see, where yields run into trouble because that's where the price runs into trouble. Okay. Um, so I'm just, I use yields as a bit of an indicator on what the market's thinking about rates, what the market's thinking about risk. Um, that's why I have lines on here, but uh, usually I, I wouldn't have moving averages because you don't do tech on yields because you trade price. Um, so if I go to the price on the two-year yields, you know, anywhere down here uh, would look like a bit of a gift, in my opinion. Um, so that's what I don't – I'm not sure we get down there. Um, maybe we get down to the 102 area. Um, but it's, it would look very tempting for me uh, on bonds down there. Um, it's been a bit, uh, well, it's fairly quiet in some of the other assets. Um, you know, oil 
had a little down move, but nothing humongous. You know, one of Trump's supposed plays is going to be uh, making oil cheaper, making gasoline cheaper. Um, so you would expect maybe a bit of pressure to come on oil. It tapped the uh, zone up here that's been in play for quite some time. Couldn't get through it, got into it briefly. Now we're back below it. What happens next? Are we going all the way back down to this support area down here? Or are we going to bust back above it? So if you're playing all, you've got your levels to trade in between. You can mess around in the middle, but otherwise you, you can do something down here or you can do something up here uh, and look for a break either side of that. Uh, Ali, um, going back to the Fed. Why is Trump in the Fed? We get two Fed. I'm not sure what you mean. Um Who will be the next Fed president? Um, I don't know. Uh, there's always talk about whether Trump will get shot of power. Um, that's, that's something we have to just wait and see uh, what happens with that. Yes, obviously, it would be market impactful, depending on what happens. But, uh, yeah, we don't know. Um, we'll, we'll get on with it. We'll see what happens at the time. Powell came through uh, Trump's last thing, so maybe he'll stay in place for this one. Uh, Rick, of course, how can we not look at dollar yen? Um, so a wild horse, as you might expect. Um, I'm, I'm really not sure about this one. Um, because I suspect this one is, if you're going to be trading this one, you need to be looking at yields, as I said. Uh, this one is really going to follow what yields do. Uh, so the moment I thought there's every chance we could get a look at 155, but we really couldn't even get that high. So, yeah, it's busted into uh, 154. But, uh, you know, compared to where we had the prior highs, it's not – obviously, going for 151s up there is, is a big old move in itself. But the fact we haven't, you know, really pushed on above those highs um, leads me to believe that uh, – yeah, I'm not sure what to do with this one at the moment. Um, I might have a look at 155, give it a little uh, big figure scalp if we're going to move up there when the Yanks come in. Um, I think initially you just got to look if we might just be starting to hold this area up here, but it's, uh, it's a bit messy at the moment. Um, so I think you've got to watch this one on dips. Um, if you get another dip down to this uh, 153.40s area that's been a seen the plenty of traffic over the last couple of weeks hold there then you know maybe that gives it something to build on again the trend has been going much longer uh, than we've been talking about the election so you've got to think that this is showing signs that it's at least continuing that trend and this is perhaps a bit of just a, a minor pullback but again this one is really going to walk in lockstep with yields um, so keep an eye on that if you're trading it um, 152 that's really become a bit of a washout level now. Um, so unless we get down to this sort of area, 150s, high 150s for a test, um, I don't know where the support's going to be. But again, if we get down trust this test this low and hold it there, then that's going to be a potentially significant move. Uh, so if you're looking to get long, that's the sort of price action you're looking for. And then uh, obviously what we do up here at 155. Um, yeah, he was awful to power last time. Uh, sorry, Angela, he was awful to power last time, but uh, power stayed in the seat. Um, what you have to watch out for as well is whether he's going to build a new plunge protection team. Um, this was the, uh, the name given to uh, Mnuchin at the Treasury and uh, Powell and uh, people at the SEC and the various markets and whatever. Um, anytime something untoward happened in markets, big moves and whatever, He'd call up what was called the plunge protection team. Um, and that was when that phone call went in, it usually meant uh, stocks saw a little bit of a bounce and a, a jump up. Um, so we'll see whether he's going to put another plunge protection team in play because that will become uh, a big market mover. Um, now, at the moment, stocks are loving it, uh, particularly in the US. Look at that for a move. Um, could we see 6K today? Um, I think it's a it's a possibility uh, if we get a real big kick on through from the US when they get in, uh, we could be seeing 6K as maybe as a bit of a minimum. Um, so the stock market 
at least is liking it. Um, so really, again, you've got to go with a trend. You know, is there any reason why this trend should break? It hasn't hasn't broke for. Uh, let's go into a bit of a clearer chart. Is this election going to break that? Not likely. Not likely. We've got good growth still. Um, it's it's there for Trump to destroy, shall we say? Um, you know, he's stepping in with the economy not doing too badly. Inflation's coming down. Rates are coming down. Um, obviously, nothing to do with uh, Biden and his policies. It never is. Uh, that's just the way economies work. But he's stepping in with some good background in terms of the economy. Um, he's got to maintain that with policies and whatever he does. So there's every reason why this keeps going higher. Um, could it moonshoot? Absolutely. As I say, I, I, I wouldn't be shocked if we, or I would be shocked if we haven't at least had a look at 6,000 by the end of the week. But uh, who knows? That's just, a, that's just a guessing game. Um, so I think you're going to find a lot of dip buyers in this one. Um, where you're going to get your levels, I don't know. Probably down around these prior highs is the first area I'd look. 58, 70s, 80s, maybe down to these areas here, 65s. So this little zone in here is probably where you want to see support coming in if we get a dip back. Get a dip back there and it holds, then, uh, you know, there's, there's your potential trade long uh, to then go for a break higher up. Um. Uh, oh, I don't know what some huge audit in the US. I don't know what that is, Brad. You might have to uh, explain to me what's going on with that one. Um, so for me, right now, I'm I'm having to sit on my hands and I'm having to work very hard to sit on my hands because I'm I, I want to get stuck in to some of these uh, trades, some of these pairs. But I, I've got to hold on. I didn't do anything uh, over the results. I, I purposely didn't get up um, for the results, like uh, a lot of the people in our room did, because I didn't want to, you know, think, "Oh, this is the this is the end of it. I'm going to start piling in with trades and that without seeing further reaction." So I'm, I am itching to trade. I'm itching to get stuck in, but I'm also trying to be very disciplined and just hold off for another hour or so and see uh, what happens when the US opens. Um, cable. That's looked very interesting. Look at that low. Bang on last week's low, the post-budget low. Um, so this is what you want to look for today. You want to look for these type of moves where we've had a low and now how we test it and what happens next. You know, this may be a very significant double bottom. So if you get a third test down here and we're back under 129. So if we get another test down here and it holds, then you know that's going to look uh, very good, and maybe we're probably we maybe we're going back up uh, to one thirties. Um, we were above uh, one twenty nine earlier, running into a bit of trouble in in the 29, 30, 20, 30 area, thirty five area. One twenty nine fifty is really the big level. Um, we've turned around that quite often. Um, we've never stayed below it for too long. Okay, so something I mentioned uh, the last couple of weeks that we've been down here, but we couldn't break below it. We had a break, and then it's got a bit wishy-washy. So if we get above this today, we're probably going back to 130 and probably back to these highs here. And as you can see, we've got another similar formation up here, except on the top side. You know, two decent resistance levels up towards this 130, 45, 50 area. So again, you've got your markers OK, you don't need to get involved around here. You either trade here or you either trade there. You either trade holds to stay in the range or you trade a break. OK, so again, you don't need a bias for this. You don't need to say, oh, I'm bullish cable, so I'm going to pile in here, you know, for love nor money. Wait until you get the confirmation, you know, because that's where your low risk trades are. You know, if you get in here 2880s and then you're down at 2850s going, oh, I don't know what to do, you're 30 pips offside or whatever, and then you're worrying and then it breaks and you think, well, it might come back or I'll wait to 2800. Well, you know, you're offside. You can go for, you know, 20, 30 pip stop off of this level if it holds. And that's your, that's your minimum risk. And your reward is back into 129, 
129.50. So practicing patience today is going to be very, very, very important. Um, we do have some central banks coming up tomorrow, Angela, just about to mention that. We've got the Ricks Bank, the Norges, the BOE, the Fed, um, all coming up tomorrow. I think that's all of them. Um, so four central banks uh, to look at. We'll have a quick look at uh, some of those quickly, see how they're getting on. Let's have a look at uh, dollar stocky. So all about the dollar in this one. Okay, so the Ricks Bank's expected to cut 50 pips tomorrow. Um, so that's the expectation. So really it shouldn't have too much effect in this. But if we see um, the dollar continuing this, any result from the from the Ricks Bank that sees some um, Krona strength is probably going to be a bit of a dip buy for a pair like um, dollar stocky if we've still got a strong dollar elsewhere. <clears throat> so again, this is what I I'm, I'm, was talking about earlier this week about looking for those those little out of sync moments okay where another currency or another central bank may move a currency out of trend with what's going on in the dollar and the bigger markets because that's where you can get an opportunity so let's say they're not as dovish let's say they only go a, a 25 cut tomorrow um, or they do a 50 and say that's it we're on pause now um, you're going to see this coming down and then you might be thinking if the dollar is strong elsewhere, that's potentially a dip buy to get into. Um, but as you can see, we're walking in this formation at the moment. So again, we've got decent levels up here against this trend line and against this horizontal line. So a little bit of a zone up there. What's that? 10.98 up to 11.03-ish. Okay, so you've got an area up there. If you think this move is going to run into trouble, that's where you want to be looking at it. And conversely, if we get a dip back to 1074, 75, again, another longer term level that's been in play before elections and whatnot, that's your level to look at. So do your chart work, pick your levels, pick your stronger levels, score them, rate them, whatever you do. Um, we're still you know, going to see some uh, a bit of volatility going on. Uh, dollar knock, Norges expected unchanged tomorrow. Um, no surprises from them. Um, they've said they're going to keep rates unchanged for the rest of the year and then maybe start begin cutting in 2025. So despite that, the risk is that maybe something's changed since the last meeting or since they last spoke and maybe they do turn a little bit more dovish and maybe tout a cut before the end of the year. It's all maybes, ifs and buts. OK, but uh, we had a little poke above this resistance area. It's been in play all year. But as you can see, we're back below it. So forget the initial reaction. Uh, it's what happens after. So again, here we go. We got up there, tried it, couldn't do it, pull back. Then we had the uh, break up when it was pretty much nailed on that Trump's going to win, pull back and look where the resistance was straight after. So this is the price action you want to be watching. Exactly what I've just said for other pairs. You get these moves, you get these reactions. What does it do after? Well, it holds it after. Okay, so if you're watching this sort of price action going forward, this is where you get your opportunities. Because then you think, right, we've tried that. It hasn't happened. I can, I can go with a short now. And uh, you make some good money out of it. And then you look at the downside and see where your support's coming in and your support's likely to come in across these tops and whatnot. So same thing. It doesn't matter what the pair is. It doesn't matter what the asset is. <clears throat> okay, the price action is king in all of them. It's going to do the same thing. It's either going to hold or it's going to break. So it doesn't matter you, what your bias is. It doesn't matter what asset you're looking at. Okay, you can trade. If you've got the fundamentals on how price action works, you can trade any market in the world. OK, it doesn't matter. It's just a number that goes up and down. Um, so learn that. Learn. This is going to be a good experience, particularly for you, Bran. You know, you, you, you've you been learning and learning and learning. Um, you need to start putting this into practice. This is what you're going through now is your experience. <clears throat> OK, this is what I've been doing for 30 plus years. It's my experience. It's why I can look at a chart and go, that's my level. That's my level. That's my level. 
because it's experience. This is your experience, okay? You need to be putting that learning into effect, okay? You can only learn it for so long before you either use it or you lose it, okay? So this is this is an experience, trading through a US election. Some of you may not have been here four years ago when we had the last one, okay? Or well, that might have been your first election. This is your second election, whatever, okay? This is your experience now, so learn from it because then it goes into your brain box for the next election and whoever's running and how the markets are reacting and what you need to look for. Um, right, guys, come on. You got anything else you want me to look at? Uh, I'm not sure what else I want to look at uh, at the moment. Um, Bank of England tomorrow. This might become uh, something that they're going to speak about. Now, it's a, a monetary policy report, I think, November. It should be a monetary policy report meeting. Uh, which means we get uh, good old Bailey uh, popping up. Yes, November. So uh, it will be a, a meeting. Um, so we're going to get a press conference, forecasts, all that palaver. Um, now, the Bank of England are probably more likely going to comment on these moves. Again, they won't get stuck into the politics of it all and the budget and the new government and everything. Um, but they will be keeping an eye on these moves in yields uh, because it is going to impact and they're going to keep an eye on the, obviously what's coming from the uh, fiscal side of things from the UK. So again, expect them to get questioned, expect Bailey to get questioned a lot on the political side. Um, he's probably more likely to uh, offer a few comments, at least on the market moves that we're seeing uh, and whether that's going to change their policy stance. <clears throat> um, are expected to cut 25 tomorrow. I don't think that's at risk. Um, it's obviously going to be based uh, on what the votes are to. Uh, let me find it. What are we expecting? We're expecting an 8-1 vote for a cut. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I think that might be a little bit strong. Um, the one voting to keep rates unchanged will be Catherine Mann. I think that might be a bit strong. I think it might be a 6-3 or a 7-2, um, but you never know. Um, if they all want to cut, then they're going to cut. Um, but look at the votes, because that will give you an indication tomorrow of uh, how strong they're in favour of a cut or not. But uh, we'll look at the uh, BOE tomorrow in more detail. Um, let's get through today first. Um, what have you got there, Angela? What's Angela putting up here? Looking at the old stocks, NVIDIA. Yeah, it's overtaken Apple. I saw that headline. It's overtaken Apple um, as the biggest company. Um, stocks, yeah, obviously gonna, we've got the uh, Mag7 stuff to deal with. Um, Trump tariffs on China, chip tariffs, that sort of thing uh, is all going to impact this stuff. Um, and if it's pr very protectionist, then that's going to cause some problems. Um but look, at, there's one asset I haven't looked at. We need to have a look at. Obviously, good old Bitcoin. Um, you know, Trump has been very pro cryptos. So that's why that's probably one of the bigger reaction. Again, this is probably very much a dip by market at the moment uh, as well. Because uh, if he's going to go all guns blazing for cryptos, then we're going to see that... Uh, Probably shoot you much higher. Will we see it up to 100k? Who knows? Who knows? But uh, at the moment, it's looking like a very decent breakout of this uh, channel, if you want to call it that, that we've had in play. We've found support against it. We've broken the prior high. So uh, this could be well off uh, to the races. 80k next, new low. If you're long, mate, I hope you get it. That'll be a very nice trade if you do. Uh, right, well, if there's nothing else for anything else, guys and girls, we shall call that today. Uh, oh, Anders, yeah, let's have a look at Euro Sterling <clears throat> quickly before we check out. Yeah, I might I might have a little go at this one, Anders. Um, as I said, this one is moving because the pound's moving more than the euro. Um, I said there was a possibility that we could have a look down in the low 83s. Um, I know some of our guys and girls in the chat room have been long uh, from a bit higher up. So I hope they've done all right on that uh, before this move. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, 
I'm going to give this one a go, I think. I can have a pretty tight trade if we get down to uh, towards that 83 handle. Um, again, got the BRE risk tomorrow, um, but uh, I can't see them being any more dovish than they are now. Um, there is maybe a case to say uh, that they'll still continue with a bit more caution than other central banks are doing. I certainly don't see them stepping up to 50s or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm keeping an eye on this one. Uh, I said if, it, if this one's going down because what's going on in the dollar between cable and the euro dollar, then I'm more inclined to have a go than because this is moving something to do what's happening in the eurozone or something that's happening in the UK. So even with the better data out of the eurozone this morning, this one's coming down lower. So that tells me that uh, it's more of a dollar move in the other pairs than uh, the euro weakening move or pound strengthening move. So, right. That's that, Angela. Euro Aussie, not one I was looking at. <clears throat> if you had a good trade in that, then well done. Um, this one's sitting pretty much uh, in the middle, though. So back to, back into range. Um, had a little tap up there, 166s. Now we're back in the middle. So this one looks very clean in terms of where your levels are. Support down here, resistance up here. A bit like Aussie Kiwi that uh, I'm messing around with at the moment um that's similarly looking a bit similar so walking a long-term range that was it right enough's enough um don't forget to join us on face later um when you'll get to hear from all the yankee doodles blake and uh dale and uh, what's going on over there whether they're shooting guns and shooting in the air or whatever they're doing over there party time have a great day everybody I'll stress again, wait for the US Open <clears throat> or the US to start firing up their trading screens to see what reaction we get. Might be we're already seeing some of that now uh, coming in euros and a little uh, mooch down again. So uh, just keep an eye on that. Um, it's going to be potentially the next most important move we get today. Have a great day, everybody. See you all tomorrow. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.